I'm early, Josh. What's up, everybody? Yeah, bruh. Oh, bleh. Hey, yeah, bruh. What's going on, bruhs? Alright, so. I have to make this quick because I'm having some, uh. I'm having some issues over here. Oh, look at this dude. Can somebody see this per... Look at this dude. Hey, Boris. Boris. Yeah, bruh. What? Yes? What's up, dude? We got some dudes here. Yeah, bro. Um. Alright. So. We have somewhat. Ah. We have somewhat of a wreck in this room right now. Because I am sorting out a new pedal board and everything is everything that could go wrong went wrong let's just put it that way can everybody can everybody see Boris in the background yeah bro what you doing Look at this dude. So, yes. So. Yeah, bro. All right. So, I, I'm giving Willie treats. We're going to take a couple of questions. We're going to make this quick tonight. Because I'm in the middle of fucking pedal board hell. So. Let me, let me just hang for a minute. I need to relax. You know what? I need to relax for a second. Um, I, I've been fighting with this damn pedal board for the last day and a half. Um, you guys want to see, you want to see King William? It was just King Will Willie. Willie. Alright. Y'all want to see Willie? Willie. Willie's right there, bro. Willie just got some treats. Alright. You want some more, bro? Alright. Yeah, dudes. What is going on, bros? Oh, Riss. Look, look, look. Look at this, dude. Hey, bro. There they go. You there? there? There's your dudes. You got them all, Willie? All right, one more, buddy. Oh, get you dropped it. Where where'd it go? Boris is gonna eat it, Willie. There you go, buddy. Boris. Bar. Riz. Hey, crazy. Lord of Destruction. Hey, Boris. Boris, he found one. He found the rogue treat. Look, Boris. I'm, yeah, there it is, bro. Boris, one more treat for Boris, and that's all. Fuck! Look at this dude. He's attacking me. He's he's eating my fingers. Look! Look at what. Look at what's going on here.
Alright, that's all. That's all you guys get. Don't give me that look. Alright. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's hang out for a little bit. I know I was going to talk about something, uh, I was going to have something planned for tonight, but as usual, life gets in the way. Um, let's see. So, we got some questions. If anybody has any questions, please send them to that little question mark bubble thing. If you put them in the feed, I'm not going to be able to read them. Because show the pedal board. You want to see the pedal board? It's, an, it's a work in progress. Okay? So I'm going to I'm going to show you the fucking uh All right, Alex Alex uh, Arazia 47 am I pronouncing that right? Um Alex. Okay. Where what was it was a it was a, it's a guy um Hold on. I'll tell you where you get the goat sticker. It's a uh, goodness gracious. Hold on. Let's find your boy. Let's see. Let's find out. You want the goat head, the goat eye sticker. That's what you're looking for. Hold on. Give me a few minutes. Oh, uh, goodness. All right. What is it? It is a, a website. I believe they're on Instagram as well. They're called Torvenius. T O R V E N I U S. Torvenius. They have a bunch of cool shit on their website. Uh, I believe they're on Etsy as well. That's where I got the triangle goat eye sticker. Um, but yeah. All right, so let me show you the work in progress that we got going on with this fucking pedal board. Because, uh, so that's what we got. Definitely scaled down from my big one. But uh, as you can see, we have a big mess of tools, cables, pedals. It's, look at this fucking wreck. So... Like I said, I'm in the process of, I'm in the process of, of getting this thing where I want it. Let's just put it that way. So, and I need to get my shit together soon because I got goat horse shows coming up. Um, yeah, and uh, let's see, let's take some. The issue mostly is that I was. I think I had some shit routed the wrong way going into the effects loop. That was a problem. And the um, the power supply, I wanted to move the power supply more forward towards the front of the pedal board. And uh, a couple of the screws that I was, that bolts the power supply to the pedal board stripped. So, that caused a completely, a complete different fucking problem. Another monkey wrench in the whole situation. So, I think I have it close though, Mo. Mo, I think we, I think we, we're very close to having this shit locked up. But anyway, let me, uh, yeah, it's, it's nothing. It was, some, you know, some dumb mistakes. It's just, I think I had the routing in the effects loop the wrong fucking way. Backwards or some weird shit happened. Um, so let's, let's, let's take a thread lock, dude. Yeah. It's, it was, uh, it wasn't just screws. It was like an Allen bolt that they use. And they should have been using like a fucking flathead screwdriver or something. It's fucking... Whatever, don't. It's I, I got it. Don't. I, it was actually a dummy mistake on my part where the screws got stripped because there was a washer that went between the fucking bolt and the pedal board. That because the pedal board is rough 
and the bolt is rough. So when it when the bolt hit the surface of the pedal board, it kind of locked. But there was a fucking washer that goes in between the bolt and the pedal board that's like really smooth. So it it didn't lock. So yeah, it was a user error for sure. But anyway, I think I got it under control. Yeah, bro. Let's see. Let's see what kind of questions we got this evening. Oh, who is this? Tristan Gaspar 34 got a good one. Oh, man, this is going to be a great story. So, yes, I remember my first crowbar gig clear as fucking day. Oh, man, this is going to be good because that was quite the evening. You guys want to hear this whole story of my first crowbar gig? Josh, you're going to post this on YouTube, I hope, because this is a good, this is a damn good story. So my first gig with Crowbar, okay, was at Jimmy's Music Club, uh, I think it was on uh, Willow or Oak Street, it's up by Carrollton, it used to be, I forgot what it's called now, but anyway, it was at a place called Jimmy's. Used to play her all the time with Acid Bath. Played there with Gold Whore a few times. Played there with Crowbar. So, my first gig with Crowbar was there. And we were opening up for Clutch. So, it was a pretty big show. To say the least. Crowbar and Clutch. I believe it was like on a weekend. Like a Saturday night or something. It was, I want to say it was like, it was a, it was sold out. So, anyway. We were opening for Clutch. And, uh. Needless to say, I was a little nervous, okay? Huh, so my nerves are already fucking on edge because my, it was my first gig with Crowbar. It was a big one. Lot of, lots of people there. You know, I wanted to do a fucking, I wanted to do a stellar job. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, a lot of people, I knew a lot of people were kind of going to be paying attention to my play. So, about... Half an hour before we go on stage, Kirk had this girlfriend, okay, who shall remain nameless. It is not, this was, you have to mind you, this was, this was like maybe, ooh, when was this, 97, 98, somewhere around there, possibly? I, I don't remember. Somewhere around there. So they, Kirk had this girl. I don't, I don't remember if they were dating at this time because it was this girl that he had been dating on and off for forever since I had been knowing him, which is a long time. So anyway, this girl that Kirk is dating or was dating or whatever, she was at the show. I don't know if she was dating him at the time or if they were in the, one of those situations where they weren't dating but they were still friends or whatever. So, she's at the show, and she proceeds to get a little tipsy, okay? So, she's backstage. We're all hanging out, getting ready to play, all this shit. And something happens where Kirk and her get in, like, an argument and punches him in the fucking mouth, straight up. And, I mean, it wasn't, like, a little... It wasn't a little... Little... Tap like she busted his fucking lip open. Like she she punched straight up cold cocked that motherfucker in the lip. So okay, I'm already nervous as hell. Then that happens. Kirk's bleeding, <laughs> split lip. All this fucking chaos is happening with this fucking woman backstage, and just it was just like, uh, what the fuck is happening? Kirk's freaking out. The girl's freaking out. I'm like starting to freak out. I was like, my first gig with them, like, well, is this how it's going to be all the time? But anyway, we got on stage and everything was fantastic. Okay? Show went off without a fucking hitch. It was great. Um, I had a great time. But yes, 
That was my first crowbar gig. So, yeah. Let's take a couple of questions. What we got? All right. The Devil's Twerk, old Cole Myers, has a great question. And uh, why was Funeral Dirge for the Rotting Sun never put out on vinyl? Funeral Dirge for the Rotting Sun, for those of you who don't know, is the second go to war release on Rotten Records. Um, and Cole, I will tell you like this. There might be something coming very, very soon that uh, might be of interest to you. So, yes, we're working on getting Funeral Dirge pressed on vinyl. We're working on that as we speak. We've been talking about it for the last couple of months. We're just working out the final details and everything, but it is coming. If everything, well, I'm not going to count my chickens until my, uh, the chickens have hatched. But we are working on making this happen, Cole. Yes, because that's the only gold whore record that is not on vinyl. And I believe it deserves a vinyl release. So we're working on it right now. So hopefully early in, early this year, early next year, maybe, well, fuck, it's going to be a while because the vinyl plants, the vinyl plants are very hard to get equipment. Uh, it's very hard to get records from nowadays. Pressing records, it's, it's kind of between COVID and one of the bigger, I want to say one of the bigger vinyl pressing plants caught fire and is like non-existent anymore. So there's only like two pressing plants in existence right now in the United States. So it might be a while, but we're, we're going to try to make it happen. Let's see. Let's see what we got. All right, let's see. The Shan 420 has a great question, and uh, hopefully I can answer it. It says, whose idea was it to cover in Agata De Vida what other covers Acid Bath do? Well, um, in Agata De Vida, they were already doing the Inagata De Vida cover when I joined up with them when they were still called Golgotha. So that was our, I don't know whose idea it was, but I remember having to learn that song when I joined up with Mike, Dax, and Jimmy. Um, other covers that we did, I believe there is a live recording Somewhere, I think it's called uh, Live at the Sports Page in Lafayette. There was a recording going around, a bootleg, of when we... It was like one of our first shows when we actually changed the name to Acid Bath and me and Audie joined the band. Um, there was a board recording of our set and we did the Anagata DeVita cover. I believe we did Lord of This World by Black Sabbath. Um... I don't remember what other songs we did. Maybe like one more cover. But the thing is that um, back then in Louisiana, it was very hard to get your band booked if you didn't play cover songs. So we would have to play a couple of covers to kind of say, well, we play some covers with our originals. So you that was kind of the, uh, it was like the standard to get into playing clubs around here, especially like outside of New Orleans, like in the surrounding areas where just you, you had to do some covers or they, they weren't, you know, the club owners weren't going to book you. That's just the way it was because, you know, they were like, well, you know, you're going to come in and play my fucking club of a band that nobody's ever heard of, and you're going to do all original material. 
that's not really going to draw a crowd and nobody's going to hear songs that are familiar. So, but yes, we died. Forgot whose idea it was to cover and I got at the Vita. And I definitely remember covering Lord of This World by Black Sabbath with uh, Acid Bath. And oh, goodness gracious, I'm trying to think of anything else. Well, I think we might have did one or two more that's escaping me right now. But yeah, I forget whose ideas they were. I know the Lord of This World idea was Audie's idea to cover Lord of This World. I remember that for sure. But uh, yeah, bro. Alright, Josh5180 has a question that says, Any Jake or Infant Slug stories? Um, not really. I never really talked to Jake all that much. You know, me and he just kind of did his own thing. And, uh, you know, I didn't really hang out with a whole lot of people, you know? I mean, I knew him. I would talk to him. We weren't super close to anything, but we were we were friendly with each other. But, I mean, you know, it was just when I would talk to Jake, it was just like kind of just like random small talk, you know, nothing super deep or anything. Um, I remember, uh, uh, this is a good story, okay. We had played uh, in Thibodeau, Louisiana with Acid Bath and uh, Infant Slug. And it was the first time, one of the... One of the first times we had played in Thibodeau. Thibodeau, if you don't know who Thibodeau is, it's a college town in Louisiana. And, uh, you know, it's not really the metal mecca. Let's just put it that way. So, we brought Infant Slug with us to open up the show. You know, because we were friends with them. They were a great band. We were playing gigs with them, and we were like, yeah, let's get Infant Slug to come play this show in Thibodeau with us. And they were like, sure, let's do it. So Infant, Infant Slug was playing their set, okay? Yeah, huh, Willie? And uh, they were doing their thing, and there was um, a friend of ours that uh, apparently wasn't really the biggest death metal fan so he had never really heard that kind of stuff before and I remember him like sitting at the bar and just going man what kind of effect is that guy using on his vocals and I'm like nothing that's the way he sings and the guy swore up and down that Jake was using an effect on his vocals and I go up to the stage and I'm like Jake this guy back here thinks that you have effects on your vocals and just, you know, do a grunt and then talk. Prove to him that you could do this. And he just kind of goes, no, man, no effects. It does a death vocal. So, yeah, that was just a funny story. Anyway, yes, so there you go. Jake proving that he wasn't using effects on his vocal whatsoever. Let's see. What do we got? All right, let's see. Crispy Creatures has a question. It says, have you ever been approached for an acid bath documentary or a gold hoard documentary? Um, acid bath, I, I was... I was in a couple of them. We were not, not strictly acid bath documentaries, but documentaries about Southern metal. Uh, was Slow Southern Steel. Uh, I did a little piece in that, talking about acid bath. Um, then there was the uh, noisy New Orleans scene documentary thing that they did, and I talked about acid bath in there. So that's about as close. It wasn't like a full-on documentary about Acid Bath, but we were kind of involved in those two. So yeah, bro. Let's see.
Let's see what we got. Yeah. Let's see. The Skeev037 has a question and says, What was the inspiration for Cold Earth Consumed in Dying Flesh? Cold Earth and Consumed in Dying Flesh is a GOTOR song off of Constricting Rage of the Merciless. Okay? The the inspiration behind that, I, you know, to be honest with you, that song just kind of... I kind of just... It just kind of appeared. I didn't really... I wasn't really focusing on anything in general. Um, it just kind of... is one of those songs that kind of wrote itself. You know, I had got... I had gotten the first slow part. Me and James Harvey had written the whole first half of the song, the slow part. And uh, the last half... It was uh, me and Zach Simmons wrote that to where it speeds up into the double bass. Now, do that, do that part. Um, but to be honest with you, you know, as far as the inspiration, it was just we came up with these parts and we kind of built the song off of that. There was no real inspiration behind it. Just Satan. Satan inspired that song. How about that? Is that a good, does sufficient answer? All right. Let's see. Let's see. Ba 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 ba. All right, God dog it. Let's, you guys are asking all kind of. Let's. Ah, fuck. Hold on. Guys, give me a second. I'm a little frazzled today. All right, Johnny MacAllis, you ask, are you 20 minutes late or 40 minutes early? 20 minutes late. That's for damn sure. All right. Let's just zip through a couple of them. I'm going to start at the bottom. Uh, oh, here's a good one. Big Nub, Big Nub Toro, Big Nub Toro asks, any tips for restringing a Floyd Rose? Yes, I have some great tips for restringing a Floyd Rose tremolo. Change the strings one at a time, and as you change the string, stretch the living shit out of it. So, change the fucking string one string at a time, as you replace the new string... As you replace the old string with a new string, stretch the living shit out of it, tune it, stretch it, tune it, stretch it, tune it till it stops going out of tune, move on to the next string. Repeat process. Now the big tip for restringing a Floyd Rose is stick to the same tuning and the same brand and gauge strings. Very, very important or you will have to rebalance your tremolo. And that is never a good time. I mean, it's not that big of a pain in the ass. But if you want it to stay where you have it, stick with the same gauge string, same brand string, and same tuning. Like I said, change one string at a time. Take the old one off, put the new one on, tune it, stretch it, tune it, stretch it, tune it till it's till it keeps hold till it holds its tune. Move on to the next string. Repeat process. That's what I got for you. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, GJ125 says, Have you ever regretted selling a guitar? Yes, I regret selling every guitar that I sell. Yes, every one. I hate to see them go. But... Sometimes, you know, Johnny Mac LSU, prime example. I just sold him a guitar. Um, you know, there's some guitars that just that I'm that I'm not gonna play that much. You know, it's not saying that they're a bad guitar. It's just that uh, it's just not gonna get a whole bunch of use from me. 
so I sell the guitars to, uh, to people that I feel are going to actually get use out of the guitar than rather me holding it in my house collecting dust. Unless it's like something fucking insanely that I obsess about. So, yes, I regret selling... I regret selling a bunch of guitars. Let's put it that way. I had some pretty sweet shit that got away. Let's see. Oh, God, dog it, y'all. What's going on here? All right. Mo Soleil says, How's that new setup going, bro? It's getting there. It's getting there, Mo. You know, just I'm. Per I want to be. I want it to be perfect. I want it to be absolutely perfect. So, it'll get. It'll get there. Don't worry about me, Mo. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, dude. It'll be fine. As long as nothing is majorly messed up, it will be great. Um. All right. Esla Rockna says, what do you think about guitars with scallop fretboards, bruh? Uh, they're actually pretty cool. I played, what was it? I used to have one. It was a, it was an ESP that had like 27 frets on it. Um, and then like from the 14th to the 27th fret were all scalloped. And it just felt like really big frets, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you play a guitar that has super jumbo frets, you don't feel the fucking fretboard. So, essentially, it just feels like uh, you're playing on super jumbo frets. So, you could get, a, you could, it's the same feeling, you know. It, it It's a little weird at first, but once you kind of get get the feel for it, it's, it's like nothing. Yeah. Yeah, bro. All right, Tristan. Uh, but fuck. Hold on. I'm messing all this shit up, y'all. This is awesome. Let's see. Okay. All right. Brandon Blasphema says, "You know anything about the Golgotha KLSU?" radio demo man there was all kind of shit that we did like that I think they did that before I was in the band so I, I I don't know much about that I know there's a couple of things floating around like that but I'm not entirely sure because a lot of that stuff was done like before I had joined up with Jimmy Mike and Dax when they were still called Golgotha. So, sorry I can't answer your question, bruh. Alright, Brandon Blasphemous says, Do you remember... Do you still remember how to play Sick Inside? Fuck. I'd have to hear it. It's been a while since I heard that song. Uh... What's that one? Let me let me let me grab a guitar. Let's find out, shall we? I I I think I remember how to play it. Let's let's find out. Let's find out, shall we? I I don't know what's gonna happen here. All right. No, let's find a good sound. There we go. All right. Sick inside, huh? Fuck, man. Fuck, no. Something like that. Fuck. Hold on. Let, let, you gotta spit. 
You guys mind spending a minute with me and I could figure out how to play sick inside? You guys into something like that? A little surprise. Let's just, let's just let's see what happens. Let's see if I can find it. If it's on the YouTube. Let's see. All right. Yep. All right. Fuck it, what's up? Something like that? Come on, I'll figure it out. Huh? Is that the is that the second rib? Sounds right. All right. Guitars, man. All it is is vocals and drums. I heard something like that.
Finally, a riff I can hear. It's hard for me to figure it out. I, I don't. Re I remember a couple of riffs. It was actually th that's before we tuned down to C standard. That's actually um, C sharp or D flat. So it's a. Uh, uh, it's like uh, so. It, it sounds. Uh, I remember it, it originally was played like. But from the recording, being it's tuned up like a half step. It's like. So apparently, no, I do not remember how to play that song. Uh, at least it was fun trying to figure it out. But the recording is so fucking hard, and it's in a, it was before we tuned out to actual C. So, yeah, it's, I'd have to sit down, I'd have to get a guitar to, to C, get a guitar tuned to C sharp, and uh, figure it out from there. So, yeah. Um, fuck. Alright, this is another fun one. Let's see. Do you remember how to play Apartment 13 from Wet Dreams of the Insane? Um, let's find out. I just need to hear it. I, I remember we used to play that one a lot. Let's see. Let's see if that comes up. All right. Let's see. Yeah. So... Uh, As the first riff, I remember that.
figure this out. It's too no high, man. your question not really it's been a long time since I played that fucking song but anyway yeah I remember that was when they were tuned to like D so everything's fucking where it would be like so yeah it's in a different tuning, so it's kind of weird. But, you know, I haven't played that fucking song. Shit. You're talking a long fucking time, man. I haven't played that sh song in particular since, like, 1993 or 94, possibly. It's been a while. But anyway, sorry. Just kind of having some fun here. You know. You know. Just having some fun, bruh. Oh, yeah, bro. All right. All right, it's getting fucking late, y'all. So, on that note, on that note, I'm going to call it an evening because I have some fucking shit to do. And, uh, so, yes. Um, so, you guys... Take it easy. I hope you all had a great weekend. Um, hope you guys all have a great week. Uh, if you guys had fun this evening or anything like that, enjoyed me trying to uh, figure out how to play old Golgotha slash Acid Bath songs, uh, my PayPal is in my bio. Anything helps. Uh, so... If you guys enjoyed that, enjoy me trying to relearn how to play old songs like that, completely out of tune. Help a brother out. Um, but anyway, I'll see you guys next Sunday. And you guys have a great week. And I will see you guys next Sunday.